Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to everyone online. Hello, Annette. And to anyone who's uh, here for the first time, is anyone here for the first time visiting today? No? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, welcome. If, uh, if whenever someone's here for the first time, if they're coming as guests uh, with you, please take a moment after the service to introduce them to me and, uh, and the other greeters and, and ushers. We'd like to make sure everyone feels welcomed and we'd love to follow up with everyone, if, especially if they're here for the first time. Uh, you know that the CDC has uh, updated some rules and the bishop quickly sent out a letter to try to uh, catch up with, with what's going on. So I'll be sending out a email poll, I think to save time, to the vestry. Now the, the bishop has re required and re that rectors and vestries uh, make some decisions and they have to vote on it and let her know. So what we're probably going to be looking at doing because we are very fortunate in Green Valley, we're about 80% fully vaccinated in Green Valley. Yet there are people who are not vaccinated and there are people who are immune compromised. So there are other things to consider. So we are probably be looking at a slight updating of our protocols. The sanitation doesn't change, the 50% seating doesn't change, that as the bishop says, so there are things that do not change, but we can just probably pull back on the need for temperature taking. And probably because we're into the summer months coming now and attendance just naturally drops anyways because all the snowbirds have flown the coop, we probably won't need to do reservations. But this will be something to be discussed with the vestry. We may look at possibly making masks optional. And I say optional because, there, again, there are those who will feel more comfortable wearing masks, and I want to make sure people know that is, will be an option. But it, ultimately, the vestry has to vote and indicate to the bishop which way we're going. But for today, it is what it is. We are still doing the same as we have been. And don't forget, after the service, we have our coffee uh, refreshment time outside, and we are still looking for people to sign up for the month of June. We only need about three people just to make sure everything is, uh, is uh, turned on and being served and cookies given out and all that good stuff. So again, welcome everyone. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and next Sunday we celebrate Pentecost. So we have a big celebration next week. Um, just so you know, some people ask, well, where's Father Nelson? Well, last week he's, um, he did the wedding for his brother back in Virginia Beach. And he's spending a little bit of family time. So he'll be back next week because he's the preacher. So he better be back next week. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get going with the service. Our opening hymn on this day, post-Ascension Day, which was on Thursday is crown him with many crowns.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the times that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Persasabas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord. Please respond at the half verse of the psalm. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. 
They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. It is not so with the wicked. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. 
All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of the Lord. I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I have a question. Has anyone here ever felt anxious? <laughs> you know what it feels like. And there's many reasons that people feel anxious. They may be looking at something good moving to a new city and starting a new position. But there's the wait time in between, and it can feel anxious. There are those who are waiting for results from a medical test, and you can feel very anxious. There are those who are setting off for maybe for the first time, heading away from home, or finishing school, heading off to a, a brand new start, and they can feel anxious. Whatever the situation or the circumstances, we all go through times of concern and worry and anxiety and fear. But at the same time, mixed in, there might be hope and joy. It all depends. Well, this morning, we are in a time of waiting. We are in a time of waiting between the ascension of Jesus that happened 40 days after Easter Sunday. It was on Thursday. That was Ascension Day. And then from the Thursday till next Sunday is a 10-day period of waiting. And what's the waiting about? The waiting is for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Because before Jesus ascended in Acts chapter 1, he said to his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait. And they would head off to Jerusalem. They didn't know what was going to happen or when it was going to happen, but they knew they had to go to Jerusalem because Jesus told them to. And they would head to Jerusalem and it would be in Jerusalem during the festival of Shavuot, or the festival of Pentecost, the, fest the festival of weeks, they would receive the Holy Spirit. But we'll save that for next week and for Father Nelson's sermon. But it's an anxious time because when Jesus ascended, and they're all looking up, the angel said, well, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Jesus said he's going to come back again. Now get on with your work. Get on and do what you need to do. He will return as promised. We say that in, in our Eucharistic 
service, don't we? Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And we wait. So the apostles were also in a waiting time, not knowing exactly what was happening. They were anxious, they were fearful. What was going to happen? What was the future going to be? They hadn't yet received the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Jesus had left, but Jesus also had said to them before, in John chapter 14, he said that I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you, and in a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day you will know that I am my Father, and you in me, and I am in you. That's John chapter 14, beginning at verse 18, for reference. Jesus promised that when he would go back to the Father, that he would not leave them orphaned, and he would send them the, the Comforter, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, who would guide them in everything that he taught. They would be reminded of everything, and they would be empowered to go out and continue the mission that they were given. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And they were to go into the world and be an example of God's great love. The love that they experienced in Jesus, they were to go out and be disciples of Jesus in the world, witnesses to his resurrection and ascension, and to share the love going back to his words before he, before he died, a new commandment I give to you, to love one another as I have loved you. You are to love one another. And that would be the basis of their mission to the world, to Judea, to Samaria, even to the ends of the earth itself, they were told. But in the meantime, it's a period of waiting. It's like waiting for a baby to be born. There's a happiness and there's an anxiety. What's the future going to be like? They don't know yet. But today we hear words of comfort. Jesus in his last hours prayed for his disciples. And the disciples were given some strength through that, even in their anxiety. Jesus prayed for them that they would be protected. Protected by the very name that was given to Jesus by God. In the name of Jesus Christ, they would be protected in the world. And the world, as described in the Gospel of John, isn't, isn't the world of trees and flowers and, and oceans. The world as up that sort of is against Jesus. The world that rejected Jesus is the society as it was currently existing. The very society that today does turn its back on us as Christians. Society that has its own set of rules. But those rules aren't the way of the kingdom of God that Jesus spoke about. The kingdom of God was one of mercy, of justice, of peace, of love, of bearing good fruit. But we knew right from the beginning of the Gospel of John, in the prologue of John, as they call it, when we say in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, it goes on to say he was in the world, but the world did not receive him and the world did not know him, and the world rejected him. And Jesus prays knowing that the very followers of, of himself, his disciples, and then the future church that would grow as a result of the work of the disciples would come into opposition with the powers that be. The empires of the world would not be very friendly to the followers of the way, as the Christians were called in the early days. 
those who follow Jesus would truly be taking up their cross and following him. But Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to protect them. And Jesus specifically prayed today, giving thanks to God. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. And he prays for protection. And he prays for protection so they could continue the mission that Jesus started. And then he prays that they may be sanctified. And the word sanctified in English here, in the Greek, is the same word for hallowed. Like in the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Jesus prayed that not only would the disciples and the future church be protected, but that they would be set apart and made holy. Not to be apart from the world, but specifically to be in the world. That they would be made holy and protected to be in the world to do God's work. Just as Jesus was in the world, bringing God's word and truth. So today we wait. We wait for the birth of this body called the church. It's a waiting time. It's a time of wondering, of concern. But yet we gain comfort today knowing that Jesus himself prayed and offers protection. And that those who call upon Jesus and call out in his name receive that strength and guidance and protection that he promised and he prayed for just hours before he was taken away to be crucified. So today we hear that the apostles were given to the world to continue the work of Jesus, that they have been protected that they have been sanctified and made holy for mission. But that's also us. In verse 20, sorry, in verse 19 we hear, For their sakes I sanctify myself so that they may be sanctified in truth. And the whole point is that the truth that is in Christ will be shared to the world, first by the disciples and then by me and by you because the work continues and the promise of empowerment was passed on through generation and generation for over 2,000 years we still have that promise the prayer of Jesus is prayed over us and through the waters of baptism we are drawn into that promise to go out into the world to be the light to the world a world that is waiting to be transformed a world that is waiting for new life and new hope. That is our mission. So I ask, how can we be ministers of transformation in a time of uncertainty? And we can definitely say the times have felt very uncertain. And we have all been very anxious. Yet, the promise of Christ has never, has never gone away. The promise of making this world a better place by using us is still there. If anything, more than ever, we need to work as Jesus called us to. To love, to feed, to pray, to have hearts of compassion. All those things that Jesus set out as examples to each of us, we now undertake. But we wait. We're waiting. We're in that in-between time. We're waiting for, in a sense, the baby to be born, the new job to start, success, whatever it is we're waiting for. 
we're waiting. So next week we gather, we celebrate. The color turns to red, red as the fire of the Holy Spirit. The day of the birth of the church, as some call it. The day that the church is empowered with the Holy Spirit and given the ability and the strength and the words to go out to then continue, <clears throat> excuse me, continue the work of Jesus. We wait today, but we look forward in great hope. Let us pray. Loving God, Jesus prayed for his disciples to be protected and to be sanctified as they waited for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who would protect them and guide them in their work in the world. Guide and protect each of us in all that we do in your name so that we may share your gospel, your good news, your truth, your justice and love in this world. Amen. Please join me as we recite our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially Marilyn Maynard Drake Ansley Bush, Jody Camp, David and Gwendolyn Gowing, Sue Howell, 
Ann Gillespie, Ann. Bob Law, Bob. Virginia Biondi, Aria Arroyo, Arroyo. Wendy England, Wendy. Suzanne Reed, Suzanne. Victor Stevens Rosenberg, Victor. Kelly Davis, Kelly. Catherine Massey, Catherine. Paul Pantaho. Paul. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we pray for the people of Palestine and Israel in these perilous and dangerous times. For all who are fearful for the safety of their loved ones and themselves, we pray that the assurance of unfailing love, even in the midst of danger, settles upon them. Shelter them from despair and protect them from harm. For all who are wounded, we pray they find healing. For all who have died, we pray they find rest. For all who grieve, we pray they find comfort. For leaders on all sides, we pray for a renewed will to lay down arms, for the strength to put the grievances and wrongs suffered by their people to rest, and for the conviction to embrace a path of reconciliation and peace that preserves the rights and dignity of all of your children. God of mercy, help us to remember there is no border that can separate us from your great love and protection, no stone that can sound the well of your deep mercy. God of justice, we pray with hopeful hearts that your beloved children of the Holy Land will be spared a future of sustained violence and unrest, and that a recognition of the humanity of all people will prevail. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus, Amen. We acknowledge the native peoples of the land on which we stand. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. And so behold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. Peace, peace everyone.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and I know that we do. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, after his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And please join me in the response. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. 
now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. And the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just uh, one specific announcement. Tomorrow morning, uh, Lila Stofel and Wayne North will be leading um, the first morning prayer service since the beginning of the pandemic. The time is a little different. It's going to be 11 a.m. in the chapel for those who want to be part of it. It's a little group that gets together. Uh, it's, it's just a morning prayer service if you'd like to be part of that. If you have any questions, just talk to Wayne after the service. Right, Wayne? Okay. Um, and again, thank you to everyone who, who has donated items for the food bank and other items. The message is in the bulletin. I'll uh, leave you to just read the rest of what's in there. Uh, my study, which begins the beginning of June, uh, I am already taking names for that. Thank you for those who have been emailing me or just telling me uh, that they're interested. If you are interested, I will have to send you, as we get closer to the time, uh, an email with a PDF. There's no booklet yet. It's a, actually a trial. It's a trial booklet that we've been given permission to use. So uh, we're actually, we'll have a chance to go through it and make recommendations to Robin Brent, who is one of the authors of this study. But the information's in the bulletin. If you are interested, it starts the first Wednesday of June, and that will be at 10 a.m. It will be on Zoom for this, for this time anyways. It'll be a Zoom study. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
one thing I forgot, okay? That's what happens when I only have two books, and I mark the one that's over there versus on the altar. Birthdays and anniversaries. Because I know there's a birthday today over there, Carolyn Gates. I know it's your birthday today. I won't say how old you are. But... You want? Okay, 81. 81. Okay. Any other birthdays? Oh, we got birthdays. Okay. Oh, we got a bunch of birthdays. All right. And what about anniversaries? Anniversaries. And of course, we have anniversary, the uh, flowers today, the 70th wedding anniversary of Joan and Robert Henley. 70th anniversary. Wow. Okay. We have to have a, a, a a prayer blessing, and then I'll, I'll let Deacon Becky take over, okay? Well, let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for celebrations of life, celebrations of birth, celebrations of new years, remembering, remembering our lives, and celebrations of relationships, especially 70 years, as well as all the anniversaries that are being celebrated for all those who are present, birthdays online, hello online, birthdays and anniversaries. We give thanks in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Make sure that uh, you remain seated until the usher asks you to leave. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You have heard the word, now the work begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.